The mule, a powerful mentalic mutant from the planet Gaia, used his power to establish his empire incrementally. His mutations gave him a freakish outward appearance. His nose was abnormally long, sticking out nearly three inches from his face. The rest of the flesh around his face appeared to be stretched across his skull. His body was spindly and gangly, and his limbs met at awkward angles. His appearance was one of the reasons he faced such alienation in his childhood. He obtains the military power of the kingdom Klagon by mentally altering the warlord ruler of the planet. The mule's conquest is incredibly fast. He manages to defeat the first foundation and establish the Union of Planets, his own galactic empire, of which he was the first citizen. The mule's empire would ultimately prove to be short-lived, however. Suddenly he stays his advance and goes into solitude, secretly fearing the mysterious second foundation who are rumored to have the ability to defeat those with mentalic abilities such as his. The book, Second Foundation, published in 1953, revolves around the mule's search for the second foundation in its first part titled, Search by the Mule. The second foundation is elusive, and the mule wishes to use his newly acquired resources to destroy it. Han Pritcher, a former member of the underground opposition, was converted, and he along with an unconverted man named Bell Chanis are sent in search of the second foundation. Chanis, who has quickly risen through the ranks and impressed the mule, reveals that he suspects the second foundation is located on the planet Tazenda. The mule places a hyper relay on their ship so that he can track them through hyperspace. Initially, Chanis and Pritcher land on the planet Rossum. It is a barren planet controlled by Tazenda. The pair meet the governor of Rossum, but he appears to be ordinary. Pritcher confronts Chanis, and he is suspicious of him because of the success of the search. It is then that the mule himself appears, and reveals that he is aware that Chanis is in fact a member of the Second Foundation, who has been aware of the mule's plans. The mule uses his mentalic abilities to place Pritcher in a deep sleep after his conditioning is broken by the mule's conversation with Chanis. The mule then reveals to Chanis that he has already brought ships to Tazenda and destroyed the planet, but the mule can sense that Chanis is not truly dismayed by the loss of Tazenda. It couldn't be the true location of the second foundation. The mule forces Chanis to reveal that the planet they are on, called Rossum, is in fact the true location of the second foundation. But even this is revealed to be false when the first speaker of the second foundation appears. He tells the mule that his rule is now over. Neither Rossum nor Tazenda were ever the locations of the second foundation. Chanis had been implanted with false knowledge by the second foundation, intended to mislead the mule. The second foundation is already headed to the planet Klagon, and all the rest of the first foundation worlds to undo the damage that the mule has done, deconverting the inhabitants of the empire. The mule knows his fleet is too far away to prevent this, and in that moment he is overcome with despair. It is here that the first speaker has his chance. He is able to seize control of the mule's mind and alter it. The mule will return to Klagon and live out the rest of his life as a benevolent despotic ruler. He died prematurely from poor health brought on by his mutations. The mule would be the biggest threat ever to the plan of Harry Seldon, developed by use of psychohistory. The second foundation, however, was able to restore the balance and place humanity back on the proper track. The mule's life was a tragic and short one. The character, in my opinion, should be remembered as one of the most intriguing science fiction antagonists of all time.